have a semi-public job, I find myself in front of crowds or cameras fairly often. And because I'm in economic development, I get asked the question, what is it exactly that you do? Equally as often. My response is, I eat bears. Now hopefully I haven't already lost you. In all reality, I have the privilege of leading San Antonio's largest organization that's responsible for bringing good quality jobs to the market. And we also work to make sure that San Antonians have the skill sets and the talent that it takes to fill those jobs. If you've heard about companies like Toyota, Navistar, or Hulu having a presence here, that's because my team at the San Antonio Economic Development Foundation worked hard and tirelessly to recruit those employers. As you can imagine, the job is so much fun. It is so rewarding. But we also face our fair share of challenges when we're working to grow the local economy. Those challenges, they're my bears. And those bears are both professional and personal in nature. So let me back up just a step and define bears for you. The notion of bears as challenges actually goes back to a proverb that my father used to repeat to me quite a bit growing up. Some days you eat the bear, and some days the bear eats you. To this day, when I am working on a big project that's due at the end of the week, or when I'm just having a tough work week politically, I'll look down at my phone and see four words via text from my father. Eat the bear, Jay. As simple as an idea as that is, for me, it fills me instantly with the strength of childhood memories. My family, my faith, and sports are everything, which makes, again, that proverb incredibly profound for me. We all face our personal bears. And through the course of my career and life, I have found that when challenged, there are really only two variables within your control. How you prepare for those challenges or bears and how you respond to them. You simply cannot control how others treat you in any given situation. And you certainly can't prevent the obstacles that you'll be presented. All that you can control is yourself. So in other words, I try to control the controllables and simply adapt to the rest. That's what works for me. Now figuring that out took some hard work. My athletic career helped me along the way. I always worked hard in preparation to win the games, but that didn't mean that my team was always successful. And it certainly didn't mean that I never made an error or missed a shot. I mean, I know looking at this ballerific picture of me, that's hard to believe with that, that amount of swagger, but we all make mistakes, even those bangs weren't fail-proof. I missed some shots and I did strike out. But seriously, as I grew up, I realized that everybody makes mistakes. It was all in how I responded to those challenges. So yes, of course, I would get upset with myself and challenge myself to be better. But I would also channel that frustration to help me improve. Now, how did that work out? So I realized that I needed to better understand myself in order to control myself in these various situations. If you fast forward to my college and career today, I realize that you've got to be very real, very vulnerable and honest with yourself in order to be prepared to face those challenges and to be prepared to eat those bears. For me, that starts with understanding my what and my why. What drives me each and every day to want to wake up and eat the bear? When I think about that challenge, it's the faces of those that I love that fill my heart and fill my mind. My parents' story is like so many other American families. They worked hard not just to provide for that next generation, but to truly elevate my sister and me to that next stratosphere, one that was far greater than their own one that they knew we could achieve. And that was the same principle, that was the same idea that my grandparents had when they were running their small businesses. A ranch on one side of the family and a tire shop and a daycare on the other. Now I feel personally responsible for making sure that I am setting that same example for the next generation of my family and the next generation of San Antonians alike. 
As mushy as it sounds, this is very real for me. Every time I feel like I can't push through or I'm just at an impossible stalemate on a challenge that I'm working through, these are the faces that I think about. My sweet goddaughters, Addison Lee and Harper Grace. And of course, my very own Sloan Elizabeth, who we're expecting in January of next year. Am I setting the right example for these young women? Am I showing them that I am fighting as hard as I can to get through this challenge, to eat the bear? You know, growing up, I knew that the hustle was inevitable. And I'm lucky that I'm naturally energetic and driven to work hard. And I've done so. Every day of my life, I've worked hard at work, at school, at sports, at marriage, although my husband might disagree with that one. <laughs> We've worked hard. It's, it's just what I do. I've been called a machine, not necessarily a compliment. I've been labeled a workaholic, and some people just think I'm crazy because I always have to be productive. But in all reality, for me, it's what I grew up with. It was my upbringing. It was what was expected of me. Nobody would or could or should out-hustle a Sesedo. And that's something that I live by even to this day. Now that part, the hustle, the hard work, that came relatively easy to me. Embracing the idea that I needed to focus on my strengths, but also accept and lean into my weaknesses to better understand myself and to be able to eat my bears, that was a bit more difficult. Now there have been several times in my life that I have felt inadequate like I didn't have what it took to eat the bear. And I'm sure that each and every one of you have had those same similar feelings. I remember going back to my collegiate athletic career as team captain, struggling one season. Gosh, we were off to a horribly slow start. We had a couple of losses under our belt and, and I wasn't playing well personally. So it was really hard for me. It was tough to figure out how can I motivate my team when I'm struggling myself. And after a few long calls with my father on those bus rides, those grueling bus rides back home from those away games, we talked a lot about bears, as you can imagine. And I realized during one of those bus trips that adversity builds character, that every single challenge, every single loss, every single failure made us stronger, made us stronger as people, made us stronger as athletes, and made us stronger as a team. What we needed to do was harness that energy, harness those learnings to make us better. We had to be vulnerable with ourselves to be able to come together and move forward. Now that next season, I went down with a career-ending elbow injury. And I realized at that time that that previous year, all of the bears that I had previously eaten, all the adversity that I had dealt with, was all that could prepare me for this next challenge, one of the biggest challenges, one of the biggest personal challenges I've ever faced. At that time, I had to challenge myself to understand what value proposition I brought to the team. Suffice it to say, this was a tough time in my life. You know, softball was paying for my schooling. It was a part, if not the majority, of my, what drove my identity. You know, who was I without it? Where would I go next? This was a tough time for me, but it was also the biggest learning opportunity I've ever had. I was able to learn a lot about myself personally. I focused more on my studies because I wasn't out having to travel with the team. And of course, I embraced the grueling physical activity, sometimes four days and even more, trying to work to get myself physically healthy again to potentially return to the game that I loved. Now that was tough because I was trying to figure out at that time, how do I motivate my team from the bench? Motivate my team from back home when they were off traveling for games. Well, I was attempting to motivate myself to get back to normal. It was tough, truly a tough time. But I pushed myself and realized at that moment in time that the value that I brought to my team wasn't necessarily in my physical state. It was in the mental resiliency that I brought. I have never been, even when I was at my healthiest state, I have never been on the softball field the biggest, the strongest, or the fastest. But I was always the team captain. I was always the change agent and the leader. Again, I had to embrace my weaknesses at that time, even a physical weakness, 
to be able to realize what I brought to the table, to be able to realize how I could motivate my team to move forward in a variety of different capacities, even on the bench, even on the sidelines. Because after all, you don't have to prove yourself if you are working continuously to improve yourself. And when you're around tables like I am, with some of the nation's top CEOs and our local top CEOs, it is so easy for those thoughts to creep back into your mind that you have to prove that you have what it takes to belong at that table. Each and every time those thoughts start creeping back up, I have to remind myself to pause and reflect because one, it is a great honor to have a seat at that table and I am representing far more than just myself there. But I have to take those opportunities to really learn from these folks at the table, to learn what good looks like, to make me better as a person, to make me better as a CEO and as a leader. Great opportunities to see the way that our top leaders operate, but it's also a great opportunity to sometimes see what bad looks like and to pick up on some of those negative things that I might not want to incorporate into my leadership style. My professional growth and career trajectory has been anything but linear. I rose up through the ranks at CPS Energy, our nation's largest municipally owned electric and gas company. I have always been driven to learn and not necessarily earn, so there at CPS, I took on all the gritty, around the clock work that nobody wanted. I ate the bear, I ate a lot of bears. I was hungry, still am, but it all paid off. I became the youngest vice president in the history of that company. My next gig was the job that I'm in today. And let me tell you, when I was first contacted by the chairman of the Economic Development Foundation, mentioning that I should consider to apply, I thought there is no way, there is no way. One, I was on a great trajectory at CPS Energy. I had a lot of good things in front of me. And after all, what did I even know about economic development? besides infrastructure and rates. I mean, that bear, that bear would surely eat me, wouldn't it? I mean, all the odds were against me. So talk about nonlinear. Now, oddly enough, it seemed that what served me well at CPS Energy and all of those different bears I had a chance to eat had actually prepared me for the job at EDF because I had to work to rebuild that organization, work to reposition that organization. It's been four years since I took on that assignment, that big, bad bear. And I'll tell you that it hasn't been easy, but I am so proud of how far our team has come, the progress that our community has made, and where we're at today. You know, as a community, we understand our strengths and our weaknesses, just like I had to do personally. As a community, we are diverse and we are growing leaps and bounds by way of population. That's a great strength of ours. But we also have some weaknesses. We lack educational attainment. Income inequality is another big challenge for us and poverty. But we're looking at ourselves in the mirror and we see those challenges and we're working daily to improve, to eat the bears, both large and small, and to make progress day in and day out. Personally, my biggest bear lives inside my head in the form of an inferiority complex, all of those inadequate feelings I was previously mentioning to you all. But bears can come in all shapes and sizes. They can be fierce competitors. They can be political or personal challenges. And then of course, there's the most recent bear, probably the biggest bear that each of us have faced yet in COVID-19 uncertainty. What are your bears? Are they bigger? now that COVID has come into our lives, none of us could have foreseen this challenge that we find ourselves in now. It is one of the biggest bears, but I am hopeful that this pandemic brings on the best kind of awakening, kind of like a, like a New Year's resolution, but much more meaningful in our lives. You know, this could be the time of invention, innovation, transformation. I hope that you apply for a job that you think you might not get. Maybe start running or taking on yoga, something to that effect. Take on classes that are far outside of your comfort zone. Create your own response to this pandemic. We are all in it together, no doubt. Even when our bodies are tired, our hearts and minds can overcome. So I say let's grab a fork and let's eat this bear. 
Now, how do we do that? We've got to be prepared, right, by allowing ourselves to understand our what and our why, to give you that hustle, to give you that drive. And we also have to be nimble in our responses by understanding that you can only control the controllables and you can only control yourself. Remember that some days you eat the bear and some days the bear eats you. We grow stronger in winning, we grow stronger in losing, and we grow stronger in learning. Thank you.